Happy Sabbath, saints of God. Happy Sabbath, New Providence. It is certainly a privilege, an absolutely uh, wonderful privilege to be with you here today in the land of the living and of course to celebrate God's goodness. I was just smiling to myself as he was introducing me, uh, brother, I forgot his name, no, not brother Donald, whatever he named there. He said to me, and all that he was saying, not Richard, uh, no, the next, well, right here, brother Cooper, or that, don't worry, that's old age, they say. But it was such, it was such a, uh, a joy to hear him say, yes, we know, as he was reminding him that this is home for me. Um, and I'm a product of the New Providence Church from start to finish. Whatever I do, I'm a reflection of the New Providence Seventh-day Adventist Church. And I take that very seriously wherever I go, uh, that I ensure that I make you proud uh, as I have been a custodian of so much of your goodness, your kindness, your generosity. So of course, while we are on vacation, it's not too hard for us uh, to, to preach, to uh, pick up my Bible and preach the thus said the Lord at home. Uh, I know that we are under uh, strict protocols. Uh, so we want to go right to the word of God in Psalm 124. We're gonna read Psalm 124th division, uh, verses one to eight. Um, I want you to help me to read this in Psalm 124, verses one to eight. We could read it uh, responsively, if you please. It says here, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, verse two, can you read that for me, please? Then they would have swallowed us alive when their wrath was kindled against us. Verse 4. Then the swollen waters would have gone over our soul. Our soul has escaped as a bird from the snare of the fowls. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Amen. Let the church say, of course, I want to share with you for a few minutes, what difference does God make? What difference does God make? Your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. Father in heaven, we thank you today for the wonderful and awesome privilege we have to sit at the, at the feet of Jesus one more time, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts, let them be acceptable in your sight for you alone are our strength and redeemer, that all of God's people say, amen, amen, amen. I know that, uh, forgive me if I did not acknowledge you, of course, in the interest of time, I want to proceed, but I want to, to greet you on behalf of our president, Pastor Steve Cornwall and our Chief Financial Officer, Sister Simone Jilts, and the 4,000 plus members of the Turks and Caicos Islands Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. I want to acknowledge the presence and the ministry of Pastor Sturb, your new pastor, and of course, the leadership of Elder Donnie Rule uh, and his team here at New Providence Church. Psalm 124 is one of the 14 chapters known as Songs of Ascent. That's from 120, verse, uh, chapters 120 to 134. Tradition says each of these pilgrim psalms was to be sung as God's people approached Jerusalem for one of the major uh, worship festivals. Another tradition suggests that the ascent was 15 steps leading up to the temple and that these psalms was sung by choirs of Levites. In other words, the Levite would shout, if it had not been for the Lord 
And then all of the, the, the chorus would come in. All of the persons that were heading to Zion would give their personal testimony. He said, when, the, when the priest said, and now may Israel say, somebody on the left side would shout, if it had not been the Lord who protected my business, someone on the right would say, if it had not been the Lord who healed me, uh, and someone in the back would say, if it had not been the Lord who provided for me. And the priest would say, now may Israel say. So this passage of scripture was, it, it, it required a, a, a testimony, it required a response from the people of God. That, that it, it meant that God had done something for you and I. Notwithstanding, this chapter was also was written that the community of Israel may testify of God's deliverance in times of national crisis on uh on a long and often treacherous journey to zion the people of god were not to be silent as relates to the deliverance of god in the midst of national crisis the people of god must not be silent god must we must share in a world um, uh, that's filled with pain and despair and and death and gloom that god is still on the throne if that it's that's all right you ought to shout praise the lord in other words the church must never be irrelevant in times of crisis that's when the people of god in darkness must see the great light and that light ought to come from the church ought to come from the house of god there is a lighthouse and that and the church must be that lighthouse must be that lighthouse david in Psalm 124, testifies of a world without God. He imagines what would happen if God did not intervene to help. In, in some ways, it's almost the exact opposite of John Lennon's famous song, Imagine. John Lennon imagined uh, the world without God or heaven and thought it would be, <laughs> thought it would be a better place. You know where John Lennon is now. To the contrary, Psalm 124 imagines what would really happen without Jesus. What a mess this world would be. I, I imagine that life without Christ would be no world. Uh, no universe with beautiful sky and sun and clouds in the day and moon and stars in the night. Life without Christ evokes an atmosphere before creation. And you know Genesis chapter 1, a planet formless and void, no shape and empty. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. What are we, what are you and I, without Christ? Ah, uh, perhaps William Shakespeare describes it best. Life's but a walking shadow, a poor player, that struts and frets his R upon the stage, and then his, he is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. The believer must understand the power of God to deliver him or her from the constant attacks of the enemy. Ellen White says in our high calling, page 200. Satan has nets and snares like the snares of the fowler, all prepared to entrap uh, uh, the souls. In other words, Satan has designed stuff to bring, bring us down, to destroy us, because you know what he came for. Satan comes nothing but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. I mean, he has full time employment. In destroying humanity. Here is the thing. Here is the challenge. There is a challenge. Here is a challenge. Sometimes we spend too much time focusing on what God or focusing on what people has done to us instead of the deliverance that we've received from Jesus. You know when we've come out of some some deadly stuff, some mess, some pain, some disappointment. We just came out of a messed up relationship. Instead of us sharing and declaring of how God delivered us, 
child you know that man ain't no good we we spend too much time talking about what people have done to us instead of what the deliverance we've received from jesus it's time for the church to celebrate deliverance in jesus christ you were not delivered by man we were not delivered by money we were delivered by the precious blood of jesus christ so to exalt jesus instead of what people have done to us in other words sometimes we forget to declare from whence cometh our help your victory new providence is predicated upon whom you call to your side in times of crisis in times of temptations some brief some people bring the wrong person to the battle on the show you know the show the famous show who wants to be a millionaire you have one of one of the lifelines is call a friend now you can't call any and every friend but a third you gotta call that friend who spent all his time in maths class and didn't skip school you have to call that friend that knows science and sociology. You have to call your smartest friend. You have to pick, you have to be biased rather in choosing who your friends are at that time. Because you know, you know why? You know what's at stake. You want a million dollars. It's all the more serious when your eternal life is at stake. Your victory is determined by who shows up to deliver you or whom you call to your aid. I want you to go with me to Psalm, the, tw the 20th division. Go to Psalm, the 20th division. We're going to read verse 6 and 8. Psalm, the 20th division, verse 6 and 8. David tries to explain it to us. He brings it to us. He says here, no, Now know I that the Lord saveth his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven uh, with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand up. It depends on who you call to the battlefield. To stand by us. Some people call the wrong person or call upon the wrong God expecting different results. This here is a challenge. You see, in Gethsemane, Jesus said, I can call 12 legions of angels to my, my aid. But, 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 but because at the end of the day, he knew from whence cometh his help. God forbid the believer that calls upon the powers of the earth. To a battle that requires the powers of heaven. In other words. Don't bring a puppy. To a dog fight. You better call on Jesus. Is that alright brothers and sisters? Uh, the songwriter says. I am here today. Because. God kept me. I'm alive today only because of his grace if it had not been the lord on my side and beloved i love this because this is not someone telling your story but this is a personal witness account if it had not been the lord on my side nobody has to tell my story i live i survived to tell the story of god's goodness in my life the believer must not fail to tell his story. I remember when I was doing my master's degree and the lady in charge of the, especially the chaplaincy program, she said, you can't not tell your story. That's why I love the lesson review today. It's about a messed up family. But before you laugh at Joseph's family, that's the story of our family. Our families are messed up. But you and I are here today because Jesus stepped in to the human family and elevated humanity. He gave us something to say. 
That's why we are here today. We survived. Don't spend your time making COVID-19 the subject of your day. Talk about the deliverance of God. Talk about the preservation of God in the midst of this storm and this trial. God kept you. We need to recognize the, dif the difference that God makes in our lives. We need to recognize and celebrate it. It's all right to say if it had not been for the Lord on my side that I still have a job. Oh, God, help me to leave that job. If it had not been the Lord, I would need to pay. If it had not been the Lord on my side, it's all right to celebrate God. Land of the living. I'm not talking about someone else's story. I'm talking an eyewitness account. You live to tell your own story. Ah, the psalmist gives the survivor, the one who has escaped the snares of the enemy, the latitude to put ourselves into the story. In other words, we will not violate copyright laws if you put yourself inside this story. If it had not been the Lord in my marriage, if it had not been the Lord in my house, if it had not been the Lord in my life, if it had not been the Lord in my health, I, I mean, we would not be around here today. If Jesus did not show up at the Red Sea, that story would have been different. That's what I'm trying to say. If, if, if Jesus didn't show up in Job's life, he would have given up. Uh, uh, my God, the best persons you believe to help Job were his worst help. That's if you call the wrong person to that battle. If Jesus didn't show up, when you stood in your lion's den, when you stood in the midst of that, 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 that storm, where would we be today? Ah, David, we share the same testimony as David. Ah, if you were to please, in, in, in Psalm chapter 3, verse 1 to 6, the Bible says, Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Many that be with say of my soul, there is no help from God. And then, and then David, David puts sila. In other words, pause a little. Or think about it. Uh, think about it. There is no help for me from God. Ah, but thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter up of my head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. I can lay down, in other words, David says, I lay me down. We're talking about rest in Jesus this quarter. Uh, I lay me down and slept. I awaked for the Lord has sustained me. When you have Christ in your life, you can sleep good. When you don't have Jesus and you're on them ghost moves, you can't sleep. Watch your back at every moment. But when you have Jesus in your life, you're just all right. Is that all right, brothers and sisters? Ah, uh, Isaiah says it best. In Isaiah 54, verse 17, he says it best. No weapon that's formed against me. shall It, it, it might form against me, but it shall not prosper. And every tongue that shall rise up against thee in judgment. In, in other words, Someone may declare to you that you're not going to end up anywhere or you're going to become a failure or you're not going to be able to be successful. The Bible says if they rise up in judgment against you, you shall condemn them because you stand in the name of Jesus. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is of me, said the Lord. In the last days, the enemy is going to intensify his efforts to destroy us. You know why? He knows eschatology. John the Revelator says he knows that he has short time. Don't play with the devil. My aunt, I don't know if she's here. My aunt, do you say? Because he, he's not your friend. You're right there. 
from his little boy. Don't play with the devil. He's not your friend. And beloved, he's even worse our enemy now than ever before. You can't play with your soul salvation on the eve of the second coming. You have to call upon the name of the Lord because those that call upon God shall be saved. Beloved, the enemy cannot overcome the humble child of God that depends on Jesus, especially the believer who walks prayerfully before the Lord. Beloved, if someone troubles you and you are a person of prayer, you don't have to worry about anything. God will deal with it. Don't, don't, don't put your hands and don't get involved in the prerogative of God. What belongs to God, leave it to God. And God will deal with it. What seemed, what, what was designed to destroy you? Or if, jo if Joseph was here to preach to you today, Joseph would tell you what's been designed to destroy you turns out to be your greatest blessing. Because Jesus interposes himself as a shelter, a retreat, a refuge from the attacks of the wicked one. Ah, he, in, in Psalm chapter 3, when it says here, Thou, O Lord, art a shield, that word means that God, absor Jesus rather, absorbs the blow. No, he cushions the attack of the enemy. So whatever you and I experience has to come through Jesus. So you only got a mile or minor pinch of what was supposed to happen to you had it not been Jesus involved. In other words, Christ stands in front of you, beside you, behind you, above you, wherever you are, there is Jesus. In other words, because we are here, this play as children of God, as children of God, this place becomes holy ground. So who's ever watching virtually in agreement with what is going on now, that internet, that line that connects them to this place becomes holy ground. God improves the bandwidth so that the word of God may be declared. It becomes an instrument in the hands of God. So the enemy cannot overcome it belongs to god even if it looks that way god only uses it he only designs it he allows my he allows it to appear as if the enemy is winning while we're trembling in our boots he already see the end from the beginning oh i i i, I let me tell you now i don't i don't know if you don't like it but that's all right i hate the lakers my brother loved the Lakers, but I couldn't stand there. Oh, I was watching one rerun turn of Boston and LA. And brother, the Boston Celtics was good, given a good beating to the Lakers. And I enjoyed it in the first quarter, the second quarter, the third quarter. And I said, Lord, they win the game. But then I saw a line along the bottom of the television. That said, rerun, recorded. The Los Angeles Lakers won the game. <laughs> In other words, you see, we are being buffeted and boxed around by the enemy. And, and he's laughing, you know. He's enjoying our pain and suffering and our disappointment and, and our dismay. Ah, but, but Jesus wrote across the screen of our history. Ah, that we, we went through something. We had a little sickness here and there. We had a little problem in our mouth. We had a little challenge on the job. But at the end of the day, the story says, we overcame. We were delivered. We were redeemed. Satan did not read the end of the story. The story says, we have victory in Jesus. Beloved, let the redeemed of the Lord say so god has been good to you you ought to say so you ought to share and declare the goodness of god in the midst of disappointment the church cannot become victims to the crisis the church shows the world 
that there is deliverance in Jesus. There's no other way for them to know. This is how they know that there is deliverance. When you come to worship amidst a pandemic and a Delta variant and a crisis, when you risk your life to be here and worship, you tell the world that there is a true and living God. When you get COVID, because some of the believers get COVID, you know that, right? And you still call upon God that God delivered you. You tell the world that God is still in control. You cannot allow Satan to, have to, to, to control the narrative. You give it to Jesus. You celebrate Jesus. You know, I was so offended. I remember on January 6th, or the aftermath of January 6th, I was so offended when my good friend Barry Black um, came on CNN. And, you know, you know these news reporters, they're always trying to make you say things to get you in trouble and trap you. You know? Now, I'm talking about the chaplain of the Senate. The heiress Anderson Cooper trying to get him to maybe say that the senators were cowards or they were scared or, you know, or, or, or to blame the Republicans. And at, at every point, at every question, Barry Black responds with the thus said the Lord. He responds with another scripture. He responds with another scripture. And by this time, I'm, I'm offended. I said, well, brother, why don't you just be real and just say what really you really feel? But then I realized I was mistaken. When you are in Christ, when you've spent your time in good times in the word of God, nothing but the word going to come out you in times of trouble. It was God that kept him. And, and he used the same word in crisis to encourage his fellow senators in the midst of that crisis. They showed the, the, the clip of him open in, in, in crisis, you know, opening the word of God and comforting and encouraging men that depended on men, that depended on things and money and soldiers, but he depended on God. In other words, they thought that they could bring men to that battle, but Pastor Black brought Jesus into the battle. Because life doesn't depend upon what you have. It's about who you know. Praise God Almighty, it's good to know Jesus. It's good to know. Is that all right, brothers and sisters? Of course, as we pull this together, Satan is permitted to tempt us, but he can't destroy us. There is no power in heaven or on earth that's able to destroy the soul that's anchored in Jesus. So today, New Providence, I admonish you from the word of God, keep your eyes on Jesus. Put your trust in Jesus. He'll never fail you. He's our strong tower. He's our strength. And Satan cannot, cannot defeat the child of God. We are beset by dangers on every path. But the whole universe of heaven is standing by our God. That none may be tempted above that which we are able to bear. So when God delivers us, just testify of his deliverance. Just celebrate his goodness. Just give God the glory. In the midst of your trouble, shout if it had not been the Lord. Every, if you're going through something now, still shout thank God for his mercies. Endure forever. In the midst of your disappointment, in the midst of a world spiraling out of control, the believer still finds peace amidst the storm. Just like, jo just like Joseph, as Ellen White says, he remembered the stories of how God delivered Jacob. He remembered how his father told him about that ladder that was annexed between heaven and earth. Those angels going up and down those stairs. 
uh, answering, delivering, protecting, sustaining at, 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 at a moment's notice, ready to deliver his children. Today, whatever perplex you, whatever challenges we go through, and the reality of it is there are many, we can put our hands in the hands of Jesus. Amidst this pandemic, we thought it was over. In fact, we were in uh, August 1, we were preparing to open up, fully open up Turks and Caicos. I was preparing to go home without having to take a test, only to discover that this morning I had to write a letter on behalf of the conference telling the churches to go back into uh, their virtual platforms. That's where we are. We can either disappear and become victims of these times, or we can also rise to the challenge and share about the deliverance of God. In spite of it all, we have a God who is well and deeply involved in the affairs of man. All the help and operation of man will be a failure. So all, I, I'm going to mash some corns, but that's all right. All of you that are depending on a new government or a current government to help to fix this mess, you went for a rude awakening. You better prepare for Jesus to come. Get your mind off of this stuff in this world. Put your mind on Jesus. You can afford to be an active participant. That's your inalienable right. But don't you forget that anything good that's going to happen, it's going to be Jesus that does it. It's going to be Jesus that does it. It's going to be Jesus that does it. And he uses the people of God, you and I, to share the gospel of Jesus in a world that's spiraling out of control. Is that all right, brothers and sisters? We love it today. If you wish to declare, if it had not been the Lord on your side, I want you and I invite you to stand with me to affirm this testimony, this personal testimony, that it is Jesus. It has been Jesus. It will always be Jesus. Amen. The hits about the eyes are closed. I want to pray for somebody because it's been rough, I can tell you, especially when you don't have answers. It's been rough and challenges, especially when you don't know what the future holds. It's been rough. What do you do? Who do you call? The believer. You see, the world has lawyers and guns and money and all kinds of stuff. The believer has Jesus. And when you have Jesus, you have everything. Today, don't lose Jesus. Your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. Father in heaven, we come before you today asking you to forgive us for trusting in chariots, in horses, in the help of men. Some of us, oh God, have been more loyal to our bosses and our jobs than we've been to you. And when this crisis hit, our bosses didn't even think twice to save their bottom line. They got rid of us first. I pray today that you bring us back to the art of worship, to the center of the Christian journey, which is Jesus. You came to this world to set it aright. Satan tries to control that narrative. But the end of the story is, you are still the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I pray today that you become real in the life. Someone who might have lost hope, someone hurting and broken. I pray today that you open doors that appear to be closed. I pray today that you open their eyes. Someone that's blind. 
that they may see those that are with us are more than those that are against us. I pray today that you help us to keep the end in sight. And in the end, Jesus wins and Satan loses. Thank you, Jesus, for your deliverance. Thank you for your protection. Because thine is still the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Let all of God's people say, Amen.